Hi, so today's question is uh, from a student of mine, actually from a puppy class that we just took, and she has a little terrier puppy, and this is very common, and I just wanted to address it so that way in case other people are having a similar issue, then we can all just kind of talk about it and think about it and see what we can use in our toolbox to try to help our puppies. Um, in this particular case, my dog seems particularly interested in running out or escaping. We tried to calmly lure her back with saying touch and her name with treats, but she is not interested in it at that moment. What would you recommend we practice? So it's important to remember that animals will always do what works. And if the driving force is more exciting to run away and to maybe start a game of chase or maybe get that thing that she's going after or even just the taste of freedom, that might be more exciting to her. All of us in quarantine understand how important it is to get out right now <laughs> um, and how that drive for being able to get outside is going to be very important. Um, and so for in this case with this puppy, she really wants to get out. So who knows if she's trying to chase critters, if there's wind and she's trying to uh, track down what that odor is. Um, I think it's really important to think about what is motivating this dog. And if you're calmly saying touch to come back, that works for many dogs. But as you've seen in some of my videos before, and I'll put one up here about uh, my dog Captain who was unable to come back with a leave it cue because there were some birds up ahead. So I had to think outside of the box. And this is a dog that I've worked on leave it a lot with and all of these other things. So the, we're gonna break this down into a couple of different parts. Part one. Manage the behavior that you don't like while you're training the behavior you do like. And so that means we might be using long lines or leashes, um, baby gates to make sure she can't get outside or she can't escape while we're working on this um, training. If you have an apartment door, if it's an apartment complex, um, making sure she can't get out that first door, um, let alone the second door and maybe out into the city. Um, if you're in a more rural environment, you might have a sliding glass door, you might have a different uh, point of entry or exit from your apartment or your home. Um, and so it might be more of an open concept, so maybe baby gates don't work. So in this case, we might utilize what we would call a drag line. And what a drag line is, it's effectively just like a regular leash where you cut the loop off of the handle and you leave it tethered to the dog, ideally on a harness, not on a collar. Um, and as we've talked about before in the, um, in the equipment section up here, um, we always, always, always recommend that a dog keeps a collar on at all times, not a choke chain, not a prong collar, a regular buckle collar, um, or a martingale if you have like a greyhound or a skinny headed, wide necked friend um, with their identification on it at all times. Um, you can dra have a drag line on that. Again, just a regular leash cut off the end. Um, and that way, if they do go to get out, you have something that you can step on or grab, or you can even hold on to it and ask for a sit and a stay while you practice some of these door exercises. So we can build in some of these training uh, protocols that we've been working on during the puppy class. So I'll put a thing up here for stay, and I'll also put it down here in the description if you wanna work on exits and entrances um, with doors and how you could start to work on that series. Um, so step one is always manage the behavior we don't like while we're training the behavior we do. Step two, train the behavior in small digestible steps. So we're not going to maybe start by opening the front door and letting her run out to the point where she can't call, be called back. Um, right now, touch is not going to work for her. Her name is not going to work for her. Um, getting her to come when called is not gonna work for her because she's not motivated to do it just yet. So we have to start in smaller pieces. So we're going to train the behavior in baby steps. So you have to learn how to crawl before you walk. So with this particular dog, if I were in the home, I would probably suggest keeping a drag line on her or baby gates. Maybe if there's a hallway leading to a, a, a foyer or an entry, uh, uh, like a mud closet or a mud room, you could put up a baby gate there so she can't even get to that first room. So that way you can come and go as you please without worrying about her running out um, or using a leash. And while you're also uh, managing it 100% of the time while you're training it. You're also doing special like two to three minute training sessions while you're working on impulse control at the door. And if you're doing impulse control at the door, remember you are between uh, the door, then you, then your dog. 
So you always want to be between your dog and the door so you can ask for a stay and then maybe reach back, jiggle the handle a little bit, and then walk back to your dog. That's a, a, an, a, an exercise called back chaining. And if you want to read up on how back chaining works, Patricia McConnell um, has a wonderful uh, little blog on back chaining. Lots of agility instructors will use it to teach an agility course. You always do the, the last obstacle uh, you train the last obstacle first. And also if you're teaching dogs to come downstairs, you always teach, instead of starting them at the top of the stairs, you start them at the last step so they can get practice. Oh, that's the floor, that's the floor. Then they do the second step up. That's the first step, which I can do, and the floor. Then you do three steps up. Oh, that's the second step, which I can do, then the first, which I can do, then the floor. So. So using the idea of back chaining, we can start thinking about how we might prevent the animal from getting out of the house to begin with. So you have your, your drag line or the baby gate as your management tool, and then we can go ahead and we can try to think about how we would maybe train in small steps what, that, what the end result might look like. Well, let's say you want to leave the house without her following you. Well, we need to work on stay. We need to work on stay with distance or she, you move back. You need to work on stay with the distraction of the door going click, click, click as you're opening it. And you need to work on stay as you exit and close the door without her moving. Um, so if she's not a, uh, she's not threatening to get out of the house or she's not trying to escape. Um, the other thing, the third thing that we have to keep in mind as well is, if, especially if you're working with a puppy or a an adolescent, who's still learning uh, quite, uh, quite a lot about consequences of their behavior and of their actions, um, it's going to be more rewarding for them to stay in the home instead of darting out when you're, while you're still in the training process. So maybe uh, give the dog a chew toy or a bone or a Kong, especially if they're older, a little bit of an older puppy where they can maybe focus on these things for a little bit longer. Um, little puppies might not be able to focus that long. Uh, but adolescents, the ones who are probably trying to get out of the door to begin with, are going to be super uh, motivated to maybe lick peanut butter out of a Kong while you leave. Now, if you have a dog who's not motivated by food, this is also another thing to keep in mind. Um, we dog trainers talk a lot about food rewards as treats. We'll use cheese sticks. We'll use, I have often when I'm teaching in real life, like face to face with actual people in a real space, um, we'll have, uh, some trainers will have this tool called Red Barn. It's like a little log of food. And the first three ingredients are beef, beef lung and beef liver. And we affectionately pup, call it puppy cocaine. Um, they love it. But even then, even then we have some puppies who are either more stressed out um, and they can't take food because they're too scared or stressed out. Um, or we have animals who are not motivated by that kind of thing. And that's really important to recognize. There are going to be trainers out there who say that your dog uh, should be working just for your love or for your respect or some bull like that. Honestly, your dog is going to do what works. And if they get paid something really good for doing the thing you want them to do, they're going to be more likely to do that thing. And if the thing that they want to do isn't paying off, they're going to stop doing that thing. So if you don't want her to run out of the door while you're trying to maybe leave or bring in and out groceries, you have to make not running out of the door more rewarding. It's always easier to be proactive, keeping her from running out of the door in the first place, than it is to be reactive where she's gotten outside and then you're trying to call her back and get her back. Um, so I would first look at this as a stay exercise, as an impulse control exercise uh, in the home. And then as a second thing down the road, I would then work on come and recall with high level of distractions. Um, and we have some things up here about recall, uh, the hierarchy of awesome. That's what I was using with Captain a few weeks ago to try to demonstrate, like if your dog cannot listen, you have to be motivated. Uh, to do the homework ahead of time to try to figure out what it is that your dog will work for no matter what. And I have had students that have come for, um, uh, Captain always will come for a find it. If I ask him to find it, my border collie Sadie, she would always come for a frisbee. So if I said frisbee, she could be in the middle of an actual dog fight and be bleeding and she would come out of it. Like, where's the frisbee? Um, not an ideal way to figure that out, but <laughs> uh, it was motivating enough to her to get keep her out of trouble. Um, 
then there are some other dogs who are really motivated for herding sheep or uh, chasing things. If you have a terrier, uh, more often than not, they might be interested in the chase. So maybe like a rope toy or a tug that might have a specific odor on it. I've had some students, <laughs> it's gonna sound super gross, I'm really sorry. I've had some students have great success out in the middle of the woods, say in like Maine or New Hampshire or even Western Massachusetts. And they have dunked um, like a little bit of dough odor, dough scent that you can get at a specialty gun shop if you're going, or a hunting shop or a fishing shop. Uh, hunters will bathe themselves in dough urine in the hope to attract a buck. Um, it smells gross. My dad used to hunt, um, still does, I think, but I, I could never get past the let's shower in, in dough pee to like, get a buck. Um, but you can use that same odor on like a tug toy and have that in your pocket. And if your dog is really motivated by prey, you can use this to try to encourage your dog to come back. It doesn't even have to be as disgusting as bathing it in dough urine. You could come up with like, um, there's a tool called a flirt pole. Um, and maybe I'll cut in a little video here about what a flirt pole is. Um, so you guys can see what that looks like. So here's a demonstration of a flirt pole. So you can see with the flirt pole that that dog is working really hard for it. It's like, oh boy, I get to get it, I get to get it, I get to get it, I get to get it. Now, if you're a, an owner who has a dog who is more motivated by toys than they are of food, um, it is going to be really important that you let that dog win from time to time. No game is fun if you never get a chance to win. So if I am uh, playing a game and I'm constantly losing, lose, 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 I'm going to be less motivated to play that game. There are um, some, luckily, uh, outdated myths that um, that have fallen out of favor, but occasionally I'll hear them come back up from time to time. And those are, you should never let your dog win tug. And I couldn't disagree with that more. Tugging is a natural instinctive behavior for most dogs. If your dog is a resource guarder, we would be having a different discussion, maybe building some confidence about some tugging games. If your dog can um, finally figure out how to play it safely. Um, but for most dogs out there, uh, tug is a great way to burn energy. Um, it's a great way to let them just be a dog. And it's a great motivator for some dogs. Um, if you watch the end of like uh, an agility trial, the dogs are often working to get a tug at the end. So like they get to do the course, but what they're really doing is they get to do the course and then they get their favorite thing, that tug at the end of, at the, end of the round. And the faster they do that round, the faster they get their tug. Um, police canines, when they're looking for uh, for drugs or for contraband or for uh, explosive devices, those dogs are also trained on toys. They are not necessarily working to find uh, uh, explosive odor. They are working to find the explosive odor in order. It's an ends to a means for them to get their favorite toy. So most police officers are looking for dogs who are very toy motivated so that way they can do their job. So think about those things. Not every dog is going to be food motivated and uh, there are going to be people who tell you, you're just not using the right food. In many cases, that's true. Sometimes you, often if I'm in a class and somebody's using kibble or something very low value for that dog and we give them a cheese stick, the dog is magically working. We're not doing anything magic, it's a cheese stick. I also work for cheese stick, so it works great. Um, but if you have a dog who is truly not food motivated and is super motivated by hunting or sniffing or tracking or tugging, find a way to use those things and Im implement them in your hierarchy of awesome and see how you can uh, redirect their focus. Um, I've been using, uh, we've been having a lot of rabbits out here and leave it is not necessarily working for captain anymore when he sees those rabbits but what he what he will work for is if he sees the rabbit he starts to like stalk and he gets like very stiff and he sees it if i say captain find it he will turn and he'll chase the food instead of the rabbit so like his brain is already kicked into i'm gonna chase that rabbit but instead of chasing that rabbit he gets the turn and go after that food i don't ask him to sit i don't ask him to leave it because it doesn't work for him right now um his brain is already in prey drive and keep in mind, animals can smell 40 feet under your feet. Um, so that's four basketball nets. So if you haven't seen my MOS presentation where I talk all about how the dog's nose works and perceives the world around them, 
check that out. That might help you and uh, that might help inform you as to what it is that your animal might be picking up that you are not seeing. Um, you might not see any distractions out there, but I promise you, the nose doesn't lie. They're finding critters underneath the ground. They're finding things up on the jet stream. They are they see a whole world that we don't see. So I hope that helps. Um, when they do the thing that you really want them to do, do a jackpot. A jackpot is like food, 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 or tug, 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 tug. It's not just like treat, good job. Um, you pay them and you pay them well, like a jackpot in Las Vegas. You pull that little lever and ding, 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 ding. That's what you need to do when your animal finally figures it out. And I've been saying animal because I've noticed that there's a lot of cat people watching these videos. This can also work too for cats who like to escape uh, when you're coming and going as well. So I hope this is helpful. Um, please stay tuned, uh, keep me posted. And if you guys have any other questions like this one, let me know and I'll see if I can make like a short video for this as well. Have a great week, bye-bye.